Oh, I see. One of the things you'll have noticed already is the very great range of specialist knowledge which librarians have to have. But that is, they don't have to know the answers to readers' questions, but they do have to know where to look for those answers. There are all sorts of this is just one of the many training schemes used in Sheffield libraries. I think this slide might illustrate what I mean. If any of you would like to make a comment about this. Every new member of staff, from professional librarians to new assistants straight from school, is shown the workings of the various departments to help them understand where they fit into the overall pattern of service. Well, this is the local studies library, and as I explained to you earlier... New professional entrants to the staff are often recruited from library schools. These students are on a day visit from the College of Librarianship, Wales, and individual students come on longer attachments. Newspapers, new sheets... Every library has a special interest in the immediate locality, and Sheffield is no exception. I'm in the local studies section of the library, where there's the largest collection anywhere of maps, books, newspapers, pictures and ephemera relating to Sheffield and its surrounding districts. The archive section holds important historical documents, like the original letters written by Mary, Queen of Scots, the letters of Edmund Burke, from which a ten-volume standard edition was prepared, and the town charter of 1297. Altogether, there are over half a million original documents relating to life in Sheffield since the 13th century. I only really used the local studies once when I was doing a short thesis for a subsidiary subject. The great thing is that there's actually things from that time, not just writings about it, you know, but maps and things like that. We have to make copies of rare items like this letter of Mary Queen of Scots since the original documents are too valuable for everyone to use. Well, of course, when I'd seen the documents, I wanted the booklet about her being in Sheffield. You know, when she was in prison. One of those leaflets on Mary Queen of Scots, please. Yes, certainly. It's great to have something to take away to look at, though it doesn't be having the things in front of you first hand. Sheffield City Libraries have published a series of local history leaflets covering things like railways, water mills and the lives of local notables such as Edward Carpenter as well as attractive reproductions of old maps and views. Just look this way please. John's come across a problem. How many metres are there in a kilometre or kilometre? Down? So how many centimetres are there in a metre? A hundred. Right, come on, get on then. to see what's come after the library van's been. If you get there first, you can have first pick of the new books as well. The school's library service is masterminded from here. The service provides books for over 300 Sheffield schools, either to supplement their own collections or to provide special groups of books for particular projects. If I were a teacher, I could come here during the year and browse through the books and all the display material, the pictures, posters and so on. Of course, it doesn't stop at teachers. Every branch library has a children's section. All the local children are encouraged to join, and most schools organise regular visits to the library. That night, the tiger didn't eat any scraps, and he couldn't sleep. He knew that he would soon be found out, and perhaps be made into a real tiger skin rug. Whatever could he do? Suddenly, he heard a noise. All the hairs on his spine stood on end, and the end of his tail twitched. Three robbers were climbing in through the window. And then you've got to make sure that you get the right title, because Phyllis Davidson could have written lots of different books. She could have written a book on weightlifting, she could have written a book on the viscosity of rice pudding. So make sure that you've got the right title, Home Management. So there's the book, 
there's the person, there's the title, now we want to find it on the shelf. Nearly every day, school instruction groups come to the central library. They learn about the basic use of books and catalogues. If we can get children to feel early on that a library is a good place to come to, they'll come and use it in their own free time. Microfilm. So any event that's ever been in the newspaper, you can get a copy of. So if you wanted some really old history, you see, you could get a copy of Sheffield Wednesday winning the FA Cup in 1935. And if you want some really ancient history, you could have Sheffield United winning the FA Cup in 1925. The mobile library provides a service for those areas not adequately covered by the branch libraries. There's also a travelling library, which visits rural areas on the edge of the city. The mobiles visit a convenient point in each area at regular intervals. That way, people get to know the times we're there, and we become part of the community pattern. The city libraries also provide books to old people's homes and hospitals in Sheffield, and they make personal visits to houseband readers. Hello, library. I used to use the library a lot when I could go myself, but I'm not as sprightly as I once was, you know. Then my daughter used to go for me, but she brought back some awful stuff sometimes. I suppose I shouldn't say that, should I? <laughs> Anyway, now I can please myself again, and there's always plenty to choose from. Sheffield's libraries are open on most evenings in the week, and there are occasionally after-hours events, like this illustrated talk on the history of Sheffield. Well, here's Sheffield Fire Brigade, the Corporation's Fire Brigade, with steam up outside the fire station in West Bar, which was opened in 1900. That's right. That's Junior libraries throughout the city organise a variety of activities and hobby evenings for local children. I'm sitting in the library theatre, which is in the basement of the Central Library building. This evening it's in action as the Sheffield Film Theatre. At other times, it's booked for lectures and by amateur dramatic societies. Record recitals are also held in the library theatre. These programmes are often chosen from the large stock of records held in the music library. There are over 20,000 records and 3,000 cassettes to choose from. And there's also a comprehensive selection of orchestral scores and books on music. Like all good things, these services cost money. All these libraries are paid for by Sheffield City Council. There are two matters I'd like to bring to your attention, if I may. Firstly, the selection of the tenders. Policy is drawn up by its Libraries and Arts Committee and is carried out by the Director of Libraries and his staff. The committee meets frequently to discuss ways to make the library service even more useful to the people of Sheffield.